Now, suppose we have a situation like this where we have 10 meters of clay. Um, let's say we know the coefficient of volume compressibility, the 0 0.3 meters squared per meganewton. Um, it's often written in terms of meters squared per meganewton rather than meters squared per kilonewton, just to make um, this number a little bit uh, more manageable. Um, so we have a clay. We know its co uh, coefficient of volume compressibility, and it's 10 meters thick. And let's say we have a water table that's at this surface here. Um, so the clay is fully saturated, just to make things simple. Now, uh, what would happen if we put a, um, an embankment, let's say two meters of embankment, um, over the top of this clay layer with a known um, unit weight? Uh, or the question is, how much settlement would we get? So what is delta H? That's what we're trying to figure out. Well, the first thing we need to do is calculate what the change in stress is on the top of this clay layer. Um, so what is the stress caused by the embankment um, at this point, or the change in stress? So um, to do that, we, um, uh, we calculate the, the stress by um, almost like we were treating this, this embankment as a layer of soil, um, as we did in our previous videos. So we take the unit weight um, in kilonewtons uh, per meter cubed, and we multiply that by its thickness of two meters. So the stress, or the change in stress, is equal to the unit weight of the embankment multiplied by its thickness, which equals 40 kilonewtons per meter squared. So that's the change in stress that's um, exerted on the top of the clay. Okay, the next uh, thing we need to do is um, uh, convert this uh, MV value into units that are the same as the, our stress value. So they're currently in meters squared per meganewton, and we need to convert them into meters squared per kilonewton. So to do that, we take our MV value and we divide it by 1,000. So our MV value equals 0 0.3 divided by 1,000 um, meters squared per kilonewton. OK, and an initial height, H0, is equal to 10 meters. So it's the initial thickness of the clay layer. So we put that into our formula of delta H. And if delta H is equal to the change in stress, which is 40, multiplied by the MV value, 0 0.3 over 1,000, multiplied by 10 meters our initial sample thickness. So our delta H in this example equals 0 0.12 meters, or 12 centimeters. So that's an example about how we apply um, this uh, a simple uh, total settlement formula to this sort of example. Um, a little bit of a reality check. So if you get numbers out of your calculation like this, uh, 0 0.12 meters or 12 centimeters, then that it somehow seems reasonable for a 10 meter layer of clay. If you had um, a consolidation or total settlement value of 12 meters, then you, you might think that something was wrong with your calculation. So it's worth checking that these numbers make sense when they come out. So there's some caveats to this. Um, this uh, model of, of consolidation. Um, it, this formula assumes that the, um, the soil is a, a confined, confined and fully elastic. So we just need to remember that when we're applying this formula. It assumes that the soils are uh, fully elastic. Which they're not. And it assumes that they're confined, which they're not. So I'm going to show, show you in uh, the next video um, a method for deriving your coefficient of volume compressibility from uh, laboratory experiments, um, or a fully confined uh, laboratory experiment. Um,
There is uh, no substitution, though, for doing um, in situ consolidation experiments because we, we often find that the MV value derived from lab experiments is not exactly the same as what we might derive from field work um, or uh, in situ field experiments. So it's, it's worth doing those field experiments if you have budget within uh, the project that you're working on. Um, the ultimate consequence of that is, is that if you uh, have difference and difference it, so the ultimate consequence of that is if you have difference in um, MV values you have a difference in total settlement and you might have more settlement than what you originally planned for and so your structures might fail um, the standards um, if you or just relying solely on laboratory experiments. So it's worth doing those in situ field experiments. So, I mean, a way, a way to, to represent that mathematically is that your MV value, you can see that it's got inverse stress units. And what actually it is in terms of um, for fully confined cases is that it's, well, not equal to, but almost equal to uh, the Young's modulus or the Young's modulus velocity. In unconfined uh, cases, your MV value is well equal to um, one plus your Poisson's ratio. Right, I'll write that like that. Um, one minus two. So it's, there's an inverse relationship between Young's modulus here, but um, there's a factor, and you don't have to worry about the details here, but there's a factor um, of Poisson's ratio. Now I've put a, um, a link to an explanation of what Poisson's ratio is. Um, essentially it's how the material um, uh, deflects out as you're loading it. Um, so in an unconfined case, this, uh, this situation happens. So you get that um, your MV value actually changes depending on whether you're looking at a confined or an unconfined case. And what that means in terms of total settlement is something like this. So if I draw a graph that looks something like this where I have Poisson's ratio on my x-axis um, and the uh, y-axis is the difference between the predicted settlements for confined and unconfined cases, um, we can draw a line like this, which is the um, the ratio of delta H uh, two over delta H three. Now, delta H two is our um, partially confined, and delta H three is our unconfined. And you can see that if um, if the settlements were equal, so if the partially confined settlement was equal to the unconfined settlement, then this line wouldn't uh, deviate from 1, it would just stay as 1. But we can see that as we increase our Poisson's ratio, the partially confined, uh, the unconfined settles more than the partially confined. Now this is, um, this line here is the difference between uh, your delta H1, which is the uh, confined case, confined set predicted settlement and delta H3 which is the, um, the unconfined. And we can see that in this situation with our increase in Poisson's ratio we have quite a, a marked deviation from uh, or the, a, a marked difference in the, the total settlement. So please be aware of these caveats and when using the, um, the MV value um, it's still really quite useful to, to use it um, when we're doing simple calculations, but there are complexities to this that we need to be aware of.